I feel kind of like a time traveler now, because to me, I just recorded the first, the, the second episode of of Dustin, and the, for you, this is probably a week later. But if you're watching this when all of it is uploaded, like in the future from from when the first people are watching this, you can watch them to f like yeah, without the time thing between and uh, the yeah. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Hey guys, it's Ibo, Bo the Doggo, and welcome back to Amaros, where we are continuing today with the... Uh, Dustin. <laughs> I always forget his name, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, we're going to give Dustin a call. And to continue... Dating scene. And see if he... Um, he made up his mind about... Uh, Var? Val? Var? Var? Val? Oh my god, I played this like five minutes ago and already forgot the other guy's name. What's up with me and names? Anyway, let's call him. I told myself it had been long enough since the last diet. Diet? I told myself it had been long enough since the last date. Regardless of how true that really was. Yeah, five minutes isn't that long. Ring, ring, click. Hey Bo, sorry, I was a little busy. It didn't take much time for me to realize what was keeping him busy when I heard Varios' voice over the phone. Varios, what is his name? And why are they? Why are they? Why are they there? Triggered! Is that your fuck toy, Dustin? Even just hearing his voice was enough to set me on the edge. Dustin snarled back and swiftly the call became little more than muffled shouts and the door being slammed. After a moment I heard the phone being lifted again and Dustin's voice. Sorry about that. Of course, being worse than usual about all this. At this point, I seriously need a vacation. Thinking you might want to come along too. There's this great little inlet, not too far outside of town. It's more secluded than the main drag and less likely to be shoved with tourists. Thought we could spend some time there. Ask about Ver. Keep on topic. I'm I'm actually really curious about Ver. Var, Ver, Var. Wait, is Var still living with you? I thought it was already on its way out. It's... it's complicated. Uncomplicated version? The short version is that he's bounced over three couches, including his dad's, and now he's back here. It's temporary, and he's on the couch. It's going to be the longest week of my damn life, so save me from sitting here between his boxes and let me take you out somewhere. Sounds great, maybe, <laughs> maybe later. Sounds great! You can sit between his boxes and rot. <laughs> I could use the time away from the house and job hunt myself. Relaxing on the beach and soaking up the sun sounds pretty good right now. It's a date then. Head over to my place when you get the chance and boss me when you're there. Everything is good to go. I'll see you there then. Sadly, he didn't get much of a goodbye before I heard Var's voice echoing in the background. I swear that bird makes claws on shark board sound pleasant. I don't think I'm making his... doing his voice right then. <laughs> Regardless, I needed to get my things together and head over. A quick side trip later and I headed out of the suburb and into the city. True, half of the city was a beach, but if Dustin knew a place that was more secluded, that would certainly be a treat. Oh, the parking lot. Oh, this actually has kind of nice music in here. The parking lot below Dustin's apartment complex was packed solely with cars. It would be impossible to figure out which one was his. Fortunately, Dustin strolled out of the elevator and waved me down. Hey Bo, glad to see you can make it. Walked up to me and gave me a brief hug, a smile beaming on his face. It's good to see you again, I'm really looking forward to relaxing and getting to know you a little better. His smile turned a little predatory as he glanced around the parking lot. But first, we got a little game I wanted to play. It's called, Guess Which One Is Mine? Oh, we're gonna guess which car this is? My bro heard as he laughed. It's just for fun, which car do you think is mine? Kind of an odd game, I suppose, but I can humor him. Find the sport car, the luxury car, the SUV, the pickup truck, the commuter car. <sighs> hmm. I. Hmm. I think it's either the sub or the pickup truck for some reason. I, I just get that, that vibe from him that he would drive something bigger. The SUV? A beefy hunter green SUV was wedged in between two smaller cars, but it seemed to dominate the spots. And that screamed Dustin to me. Could it be that one? 
Not really my scene, kid. Shark's gas and generally looks obnoxious on the road. There's my baby, right there. Is it a commune car? No, it was a pickup truck! Ah, I was... <laughs> Damn, so close! So close! He motioned to a pickup truck in the back of the lot. It was powered to blue and looked like it had seen better days. Not quite what I was expecting. Huh? Wow, I would never have guessed. Oh, come on, I would have. <laughs> and that's why we're getting to know each other better, kid. That pickup means the world to me. It was my first car and the first real thing I had that I could call my own. Yeah. That truck let me be independent for once. Helped me to make my own way. It's full of memories. He must really like that pickup, considering the amount of work he likely put into it. Still, it wasn't rickety or anything. Just well loved and long lived. Toss your stuff in the back, kid. We should get going. It's a bit of a drive to the beach. I nodded and set my bag on the bed of the truck. I noticed I had already loaded in a couple of folding chairs in the cooler as well as his own things. A black speedo peeked out of the rucksack he had tossed next to the cooler. Hop in, kid! The heavy doors of the truck slammed shut as the engine reluctantly revived life. After a moment's hesitation, the cough of the engine, the truck lurched alive and we were on our way. Okay, so that's the bug in these episodes, I guess, that it doesn't switch properly. Uh, it doesn't switch scenes properly. Um, anyway, despite the questioning roar and start, the truck's ride was remarkably smooth. Dustin and I chatted about the little things, weather and the like before we settle into a more serious tone. I wanted to thank you for giving me a reason to get Vahar out of the door quickly. I think you need this guy away badly. I know you dated that guy, but he gets on my nerves. I'm surprised he doesn't drive you crazy more often. Saying it's complicated would be an understatement. <laughs> Varioth was special to you, wasn't he? Was. Now? <laughs> Weird to think about it that way. We've been on and off again more than a light switch, but somehow I always wound up right back where I started. You mean with him? <sighs> more than that. Everything seemed just to settle back into the same routine. Work, dates, bills, even old Betsy here would seem to wind up with the same issues again. Sounds like a rut. You named your truck? I'm not sure what a rut is, so I'm not gonna ask that. But you named your truck? You named your truck Betsy? <laughs> yep, first girl I dated in high school. Awkward, cumbersome, needed a bunch of maintenance. You seem like the name was a perfect fit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Betsy. Huh. Well, it takes a certain kind of person to name their car, you know? Oh yeah, me and my, my one of my old friends, we... He named his car, uh, he had an old uh, Skoda Felicia, <laughs> he named it Emo Bob for some reason. I had a little sign on the back that said Emo Bob. <laughs> worst car ever, but it was nice. First car, worst car. Ah. Still, yeah, Vaughn was important to me. Now, I don't even know. I certainly don't think I'm that important to him. I got quiet for a moment. It never really occurred to me that Dustin would be aware of Varro's manipulations since it seemed that he just went along with them. It made me think back to before I went to Amaros. That strange sort of hate feeling I had at the start. It was in a rut, frustrated with the job hunt and going nowhere, but I still came back. I still turned to Kobe to drag me out of it. Hey, looks like we're in luck. No one else is out here. There's plenty of parking right by the beach. Yay, parking! We pulled to a stop and got out, grabbing our things from the bed in the truck and hiking down the narrow stairs to the sand below. I suppose it didn't matter what we had going on before now. The only thing that was worth thinking about was enjoying the sun, the surf and the company. Ooh, pretty! And some jazzy tunes. I like it. Dustin wasn't kidding about the beach being secluded. Sheer cliffs of sandstone blocked off access from the main road as the inlet looked like it had been carved out of an underground spout. Still, the sun was just in the right position to flood the tiny beach and the waves were soft lapping to the shore. It was picturesque! Dustin started by folding out the chairs, tossing down the blanket over the sand. Setting the cooler in the middle, he set up a small beach umbrella towards the back before smiling back over at me. There we go. Now our only little slice of heaven. Speaking of which... 
Ho oh, ho! Oh. Dustin unceremoniously chucked off his shirt, tossing it back over to one of the chairs. After a short stretch, he settled in onto the blanket, leaving his chest exposed to the sun. Ah, oh, man, I live for this. Nothing like the feel of a warm sun on your fur. <laughs> you're such a house cat. Don't hug all that sun. I prefer some shade. No, you're such a cat. <laughs> you're such a house cat. <laughs> you're such a cat stereotype. Curling up in the sunbeam, the first chance you get. No use denying my heritage. It's so good! So, how did you find this place? A secluded little cove like this should be hopeful for everyone looking for a little privacy. Dustin squinted a little into the bright blue sky before rolling onto one side to face me. It was early on with Javar, back when he just wanted to get away from everything. And I was his major form of escape at the time. S escape from what? Seemed like he was perfectly happy where he was when I talked to him. Used to be. He wasn't that into money and getting stuff. I figured it was just his teenage rebellious face spilling over. One day, he shows up at my place in the middle of the night with a beach towel and a cooler of beer. Said his dad tried to set him up with someone from work for a date or something. So we hopped into my truck and just drove. He tossed back a couple of beers and snugged up to me. When we passed near here, he saw the moonlight of the waves and said we should stop. And, ha, well, obviously we did. Stayed out until 1am just listening to the waves and drinking. We both didn't want to risk driving back, so we just slept on the beach and drove home after sunrise. Man, his dad was pissed. Doesn't sound like the war I saw. That's why he's important to you. Doesn't sound like the war I saw. I mean, yeah. That doesn't sound all like the arrogant parrot I met at your place. People change. I see it enough at work. I should have seen it at home too. Am I always going to compete with that memory? Getting kind of heavy for a relaxing beach trip, aren't you kid? Well, he keeps coming up regardless. To be honest, I think we're both competing with that memory. Me seeing what war is now and you coming into the end of the train wreck that was. But I'll tell you, it's different now. That routine isn't comfortable anymore and I'm ready for a new one. <laughs> The waves washed away everything else for a moment. I knew my uncertainty was going to linger. Knowing just how far back Var went, I couldn't help but remember his taunts. He'll dump you by the curb. For the moment, no matter what either of us went through, he was willing to share this. Laying in the sun, near the surf, he wanted to take time to be with me. That's worth something. <coughs> you got quiet there for a second, kid. Something on your mind? Nothing important, just thinking, just thinking, be honest, just thinking about us, this whole situation, and where it all might end up. I forgot how complicated dating can be sometimes. Heck, I forgot how complicated people can be. It's not easy, sure, but nothing worth doing is, well, except for one thing. To my surprise, Dusty stood up from his blanket and moved over next to me. His paw ran softly along my shoulder and down the back of my neck as he leaned in close. Gently, his lips brushed my own as he pulled me towards him for a long, luxurious kiss. I could feel his strength wrapped around me and the tickle of his rough tongue against mine. There was a tenderness, a warmth that radiated through the kiss. The sunbathing, the sunbathing had left his, the sunbathing has left his firm, aching, aching. The sunbath had. The sun bath had left his fur achingly hot and the rolling warmth of the breast left me slumped into his arms. Then the cool ocean breeze passed over my lips. The shock of separation from him pulling me back from my haze. His! <laughs> His! His paw stroked my neck softly, his smile beaming down over me. That's something Varrot and I never did here. A new memory that I am enjoying greatly. I felt the shield rise from around me. Maybe it was the oceans, or maybe it was just my nerve, but I pushed forward into the thick furred warmth and buried my face into his mane. Aww. I take it that it was a good memory for you too then. Mm-hmm. Definitely for parts me. No, I'm just gonna be... Mm-hmm. Definitely for parts me, like my dick. <laughs> I mumbled and nodded, surrounded by silken fur that trapped me in waves of warmth. His scent filled my nostrils and left me dizzy. He continued to stroke my head and neck softly, stretching out to catch a few more sunbeams. 
Dustin snuggled up next to me, watching the waves roll down along the shore and keeping an arm around my shoulders. It was a vastly different date, and different Dustin that I had first met. I felt more comfortable with him, and less like I was just another one night stand. We set out until just before sunset, the shield eventually getting too much for me and Dustin to bear. We should get going, it's only going to get cold at this point. Oh, you put on your shirt. <laughs> oh, you put your shirt on. I don't want to leave. I am getting chilly. I'm gonna do the first one because I was. I like oh, you put your shirt on. Oh, why do you have to put your shirt back on? <laughs> because despite my furry hide, I was getting a chill. Though I know you feel cheated and not getting to stare at my chest anymore. I promise, this won't be the last time we come here, and next time, maybe I won't have any work in the morning. Oh, begrudgingly, I gathered my things, and the cooler as Dustin grabbed the blanket and umbrella. The warmth came back to juice as we moved off the trail towards the truck, and I felt a little of that hazy, dreamy feeling from his embrace. Powering through, I tossed my bundle into the back of his truck and hopped back inside. Once the door shut, the truck roared to light immediately. My surprise was echoed on Dustin's face. Well, I guess best he likes you too. We both chuckled as he pulled smoothly out of the parking lot and back into the main road. The trip was much lighter than the one over. I was still riding on the high of that kiss, and Dustin's paw had found its way to mine and squeezing it firmly. We talked for a while longer, since he insisted on dropping me by my house instead of making me walk home. Didn't you drive to Dustin? Or did I get that totally wrong? <laughs> I wanna see where you live anyway, just in case I wanna drop by and say hi. Gosh. As we pulled up to the house, Dustin parked and the two of us walked to the front door. Nice place your parents have. Cozy but spacious. Not quite spacious enough that I get my own room, but my brother and I get along well enough. Heh. <laughs> well, I suppose this is where I should say goodnight. Don't want your dad to come out and kick my ass for bringing you home after curfew. I'm an adult, Dustin. Don't be a dick. He grinned at me and leaned in to kiss me on the cheek. Give me a call soon, kid. I don't like to be kept waiting for long. As I waved goodbye, I could feel eyes on me. Turning around, I drew in a deep sigh when I saw who it was. So, who was that? <laughs> I love Kobe. <laughs> Suddenly, I feel like it's going to be a long night. No, <laughs> that's a nice ending. But yeah, I'm going to end it here, guys. Um. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like to make me and the YouTube algorithm happy. And if you want to see the next episode where we do the thing with Dustin that has been in the air for all the episodes now, subscribe! And remember that those episodes are age restricted, so you have to be 18 plus. I've seen you in the comments, people have been discussing it. I'm not saying that you, as a person, should be 18+, plus, but the account that you use have to be, like the Google account you use, has to have, has been set to a date where you are 18+. Plus. Uh, that's it, so thank you all for watching, and thank you for these awesome patrons. So yeah, let's uh, leave it on a bro paw. So remember guys, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. to the gym yesterday and my arms are killing me today. Ah.